So Bob, well, you do you do in your winemaking process at Levy McClellan something that's rather unique, which is barrel fermentation of the entire thing. Could you could you yeah. just speak a little bit to yeah. that? This is explained in that in that document as well, the principles of wine growing. But um, briefly, it was something that uh, I started working with in 1999 uh, for Bond, and we had a vineyard, one of the vineyard sites that we were working with. Uh, we it, it, aside from being young vines, it was in a location and it was in a soil type that gave us tannins that were just very untenable and, and it was very difficult for me to figure out a, a methodology that would, that would soften the tannins and, and match with the character of the site. And we, we saw in, in that year, um, actually in 98, we saw in Bordeaux two wineries that were using uh, fermentation in barrels and they had very different methodologies, uh, the two of them. And, but nonetheless, we were the first to use that in, in California in 99 and started playing with it. And it worked very well for that property. And when we had our first crop, which was in uh, 2003, but we, we didn't release that vintage, but um, we started playing with the barrel fermentation with our property because we had we'd already known at that time that it was a it was a technique it was a winemaking skill that didn't um you know didn't work across the whole spectrum it, it worked better for some properties and and some grapes than, than others and so it was really a trial and error and, and see see what what happens um today um Anyway, we tried we tried it with with the Levy McClellan, and each year we added more and more because we liked it quite a bit, until finally um, by the uh, vintage two thousand eight, I think it was, we were <laughs> Martha and I had looked at each other and said, you know, we like what what this does every year the best. Why don't we just do hundred percent barrel fermentation? Now to understand what that means, um, I have to explain a little bit. Uh, first of all, there's the cost involved because we were using 100% new French oak every year. And um, secondly, I have to explain that we need to we need four barrels to ferment in in order to end up with one barrel of finished wine. So it meant we had to buy every year four times the number of barrels we actually needed to end up aging our wine in. So it wasn't an insignificant um, uh, expense. Um, and obviously it's not a technique for everyone, um, but we've maintained that ever since. And uh, I don't know of any other wineries that are doing that. There was, Maceto was doing that, uh, but they've, they've backed off. Um, in fact, they were fermenting in, in a barrel called a Cigarillo, which was instead of 225 liters, they were fermenting in a 150 liter barrel, a smaller barrel. But, um, they're no longer doing that. I don't know of anybody else who's utilizing 100% barrel fermentation. But what barrel fermentation does is really two, two great benefits. One's a, one's a logistical benefit uh, that, that ends up uh, impacting significantly uh, or can um, wine quality. And that is you're able to separate um, very small parts of your vineyard uh, and ferment them separately instead of combining them with something that might not be as high quality, especially for a small location like what we have. We only have six acres. And um, so that's a tremendous benefit uh, in, in being able to dissect and, and, and separate quality levels and, and as well as uh, character. And um, the second benefit is, there's actually th three I'll go into. The second benefit is that it's a, an extremely gentle means of extraction of, of flavor um, and color and tannins from the grapes. Um, the other methods are things like pumping over and punching down, which you may, may have heard of. And you're moving the wine a lot. And, and, it, and the, the, when, when we approach winemaking, our whole goal is to treat the wines as gently as possible, to try to retain what it is we spent all all that growing season trying to build up and not treat them roughly and not um, be aggressive with them and and push down what what we were so careful to build up so in barrel fermentation we typically 
we pull the heads out of the barrel, take it apart, pop the head out, fill that barrel with grapes that are hand sorted and there's no stem bits, there's no leaves, there's nothing but just whole grapes in there. Put the head back in, lay the barrel on its side uh, on rollers and then as it starts to ferment, we can roll these barrels any number of, of times a day that we want to. And usually at the peak fermentation, we're rolling them four different times during the day uh, under a different um, regime. Um, and in rolling them, it's, it turns out it's just really a gentle way of, of getting the skins in contact with the liquid. Because what happens as it ferments, the, the grapes or the skins, depending on whether you crush them or you don't crush them, um, float to the surface because they're held up there by the, the carbon dioxide that's released that holds it on top of the, the wine. So to get the character, the flavor, the color, the, the, the tannins, you need to have an, uh, a, a mixing of those. And usually it's either punching them down, which can damage the skins, break them open, things like that, or pumping them over. And again, unless you're screening out the, the solids, you're, 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 um, you're damaging them as well going through a pump. And even if you're not, you're doing a lot of aeration um, by pumping a lot each way. So it's, it's in our view, uh, and the results show this, it's not as gentle a way to extract. Um, anyway, uh, the, the third benefit is that because these are small volume um, containers, uh, there's less of a chance of runaway uh, high temperatures, we can, we can put these barrels in a, in a room that's uh, the exact temperature that we want to maintain and maintain a very constant um, temperature from the start to the finish. And that's a, a huge advantage uh, for something like native yeast, which is what we use because it's native yeast tends to be very um, uh, sensitive to changes in not only temperature, but, but uh, things like alcohol and we can't control the change in alcohol because as part of fermentation, um, it's, con it's converting sugar to alcohol. So it is gonna change, it is gonna go up. It's gonna make that environment harsher for the, for the yeast to grow in. But if we maintain the, a constant temperature, we're taking one less uh, fluctuating parameter out of, the, out of the picture. Anyway, those are the dominant benefits of barrel fermentation.